Well, uh, all of his books, with the sole exception of uh, his All the Pretty Horses, which is the book that brought the greatest fame to him, I understand. Uh, I've recently read, much to my delight, uh, a book by a former student of mine, Sam Lipside, a book called The Ask, uh, Knock Me Flat. And I'm prepared to say that uh, in McCarthy, in Lipside, in The Ask, I can't go on record as endorsing his other books. I haven't read them, but I've read The Ask. I've read all of DeLillo. I've read all of McCarthy. We have much the same figure as we have in Jelonic. We have a man on the run, uh, as all of us is. I mean, there's not a one of us. Uh, all of us is or all of us are. I don't know whether you use it collectively or not. I used to write books on English grammar, but hell, I don't know anymore, and it certainly wouldn't bother Jelonic one way or the other. But Jelonic is a man who's been on the run ever since he's been, as is the case with the other figures, principal figures in Eugene Martin's work. And the thing of it is, if we are prepared to acknowledge the actuality of our existence, we're all on the lam. Obviously, we're trying to outrun death, uh, which seems uh, a bad job from beginning to end. We know that. But meanwhile, all of death's uh, substitutes, all of death's stand-ins, all of, all of death's uh, minions, as it were, do their best to uh, ride our noses right into the earth. And uh, such a person is Jelonic in his flight with Miss D, the daughter of Little Bit. These three are on the road in flight from really everything, uh, including themselves. And their flight constitutes, until we get to uh, uh, the, how does one put this best, uh, the explosion uh, that the novel uh, eventuates in, uh, their flight is a flight that is going to be familiar to anybody who picks up this book, and yet not, because Martin can render the actual world with a vivacity, with a vividness, with an authenticity, with uh, a, the genius that um, renders me limp. I look and I look and I look, having myself fooled around with writing over the course of my life. My adult life has been given over to teaching writing, to trying to write, to publishing writers. But I can uh, say without the slightest hesitation, when you're in the presence of the real thing, as you are with McCarthy and DeLillo and Sam Lipside, and as you most potently are in the presence, when in the presence of Eugene Martin, you know nothing in you could propose to the page the kind of force, the kind of drama that this man can with a mere gesture. Um, it is not that Martin struggles uh, to produce sentences elaborate in their uh, uh, exposition of violence, it is that everything that underwrites the sentence, everything which undergirds it, underpins it, everything which buttresses it, issues out of a man who is possessed for the moment, theatrically perhaps, with a violence unequaled in my experience. It is not that this man is out uh, with a high-powered rifle shooting at citizens. This man doesn't need to. This man just needs to be among us. And we sense in him the force <clears throat> that his personality in its uh, difference from all the personalities around him expresses. It is rather like um, the man, Jelonic, puts me in mind of Neil Cassidy, uh, a man of the sweetest disposition but inexhaustible energy, an inexhaustible or indescribable distinction from all of his fellows, so that when he was among others, his difference was the issue at hand, and people were afraid, afraid of Neil Cassidy, where he to walk into a room, everybody sort of winced. 
what might he do? Um, he uh, looked, as I expect Jelonic does, as a man capable of any kind of act. Indeed, I saw Cassidy capable of every kind of act, but he was a good man, a dear man, an angel. If any uh, man had ever been in my company over the course of my life that seemed to put me in mind of something angelic, it was Neil Cassidy. He knew your heart. Jelonic knows your heart too, but in a way that makes Jelonic, instead of prepared to go up and mend your heart, to heal it, to cure it, it puts him all the more at odds with what's around him because he sees in your heart uh, the death that is coming on, that is parsed out, that's distributed equally among us all. And his depression is utter. His depression is uh, uh, the very personification, as it were, of the idea of depression. And his triumph, his transcendence, his uh, means of divinating uh, the worst uh, is the conclusion of the book uh, takes you utterly by surprise and leaves you entirely limp with uh, the joyousness, the jubilation of uh, a, uh, a job unimaginably well done. This book, Firework, well named indeed, uh, suggestive uh, far more of its uh, force than was Jelonic's Armageddon uh, is a book of that uh, I suggest to you will enter the roles as one of the great novels uh, by an American in not the 21st century, in any century. One reads Blood Meridian and is prepared to say, you know, it beats uh, anything Melville ever produced, including Moby Dick. It is the great American novel. One reads the book I'm reading now for the sixth time, Don DeLillo's Players, and is astounded at its prophetic power, at its ingenuity of utterance, and is prepared to say, there's never been a book of this kind by an American. One wants to say the same thing for Eugene Martin's Firework. It is unique in my experience, as is Sam Lipsight's The Ask, and uh, having read probably more books than anybody who is hearing, seeing this endorsement of firework, I'm telling you, uh, the fewness of those works that have seized me utterly and swept me away uh, includes Eugene Martin's firework. Can't make a more extravagant statement in its behalf if you care about writing, if you care about reading, if you care about yourself, if you care about being uh, present for the revelation of being, if you care about uh, ontology, as we are delivered it by the conditions, you must read Eugene Martin's Firework.